my mountaintop. This is Mount Manitoba, and this is not in Hall of Fame.com presenting the Hall of Fame show. It's me, Kirk Buckner. Evan Nolan, how you doing, brother? Good. How are you, sir? Doing good, doing good. And what do we owe not in Hall of Fame.com? The fictitious athlete hall of fame, which we talked about last week, the fictitious rock and roll hall of fame, which we're going to talk about this week, and of course, our favorite project, our bastard child. Somehow we have a love child. Never meant to be. No. Very nice. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, that is the United States Athletic Hall of Fame, which is I'm actually going to touch on a little bit, but you can all vote on that now. www.notinhalloffame.com forward slash USA for the first ever class. And uh, we've got a, probably a eventual first ballot Hall of Famer that I know you're going to be talking about later. Mm -hmm. And possibly one who may not be. <laughs> yeah. And I, we'll I, I will also have one in my elevator down. So let's kick off with the smorgasbord of shit. What could that be? What could that be? Well, it's whatever Kirk wants to talk about. So, but I'm going to kick off with an, with a trivia question for you. Ooh, exciting. Yes. So like next week, uh, I'm going to be talking about, uh, I was hoping I'd have it ready. I've got the list ready, but it's not completely up on the site yet where, cause I do the preseason, uh, not a uh, monitor, the hall of fame monitor for those mm -hmm. who are active in pro football. I can give you the top. Well, we'll, we'll do that next week. We'll go through a bit of that. Uh, but as I'm doing all of that, I noticed something pretty interesting. Now I don't, I didn't go back, back to, cause I actually went to, oh, so let me, before I go into this, let me tell you where I went to today. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had a day off and Pauline was off, my lovely wife. We went to Lake Winnipeg and went to a beach in Lake Winnipeg. Okay. And you know, it's a Canadian beach when you're sort of looking at, you're on the beach, it's a pebbly beach because it's on a lake. And then you look over to the left and there's a sign that says snowmobile parking here. Okay. Which I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah. It does not happen when I didn't see that in Barbados. Yeah. Understood. Okay. But uh, anyway, I, I'm, I'm, so as I'm going through all of this, I don't, I didn't do all the research on this, but I don't know when the last time we've started a season in the NFL without an active rusher on a roster. Don't look, because this is the question for you. Okay. Because there's no active rusher with 10,000 yards. I don't know when the last time that's ever happened. Wow. Not only that, we don't have an active rusher who has 8,000 yards. Now, technically, Adrian Peterson is still considered active, but he's okay. not active roster. I, that was the first thing I was thinking, so. Yeah. So, I'm going to give you five guesses. Oh, geez. That's how, that's how strange this, this, yeah. Who is the leading active rusher who's, who is on a roster? Wow. Yeah. Um... So I'm thinking of like the really big guy, Saquon Barker, who's not old enough yet. Christian oh, okay, not only that, I, I'm so confident on this one. You can even have, there's no bet for you and with me. Just like we have our beer bet. What am I down for? I think I'm down, I got yeah, you're down to four. four. Down to four. Uh, All right. Now, now I'm getting the chicken wings. <laughs> sounds good. This. You know uh, All right. So I can't give a hint because it will give it away. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with, I can't think of his name right now. He used to be on the Cardinals. It's now on the Texans. Yeah, I know what you're thinking of, but David. No. Okay. Um, it's not a Patriot. I can tell you that much. Um, not a Patriot. And I'm presume. well, the way you're saying it's obscure, I'm presuming it's not uh Derek Henry. So no. Um I I I can't even yeah is it yeah I can't even hazard a guess. I don't even know. Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram? Yeah. Wow. Yes. Wow. How many yards does Mark Ingram have? Uh, I forget the exact amount, but it's less than 8,000. Wow. I mean, the fact that I, like, and I'm a big pa uh, Patriots. I'm a big Saints fan. Look at me. I'm a big Saints fan, and I didn't even know that he had that many yards. Wow. He's actually the all-time leading rusher for, in New Orleans, which is another thing that blew my mind. He's the all-time leading. That. Yeah. I, that I did not know either. Yeah. I, I just learned that as I was doing all my stuff for that. 
because he's ranked in my top 150. And realistically, only the top 15 are worth looking at. But, you know, I like sort of like charting them up because like you, I'm list obsessed. Also, mm-hmm. like you, I have a life outside of that, which is also why I think it's <laughs> pretty good. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I never would have gotten Ingram. Like, I didn't, no. even, I didn't yeah. even think of my, I kind of forgot he was in the league, to be honest. I mean, I, 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 could, I was almost going to say, well, I'll give you a lot. I'll, I'll buy you the lobster, but. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so I thought that was really interesting. And then I thought I was also looking at uh, going into the season too. Uh, where is that? I just had that up. It is passing yardage. So, like, rating. Well, of course. <laughs> where is that? Oh, tell me I didn't delete that page up here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to bring that up here. Matt Ryan could, mm-hmm. if he has a good year or, or a very good year, which he probably won't, but if he does, he could fin- he could finish the year at number five all time passing yards. I know. Like that is mind blowing. So yeah, Matt, and what, about, what about Stafford? Stafford, by the time he's done, is going to be ridiculously up there too. Well, right. So if Matt Ryan even is just mediocre this year, he's going to pass Dan Marino, which yeah. I think tells you all you need to know about this this current era. Yeah, and which is why I sort of like I got a kick out of looking at how there's the rushers just aren't equaling up here. Uh, Stafford will pass John Elway this year if he's healthy. Hmm. And yeah, well, he won't. He's, he's not going to get to the top 10. He'll, he'll be number 11 because the guy who's number 10 is Aaron Rodgers and he's 6,000 yards ahead. Okay. So that's not happening. So you're, you're good buddy, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I, yeah, I actually drafted him in fantasy football this year. Ah, you know, I, I had mine and I finally for the first time ever, do I like the team I've got, which means I'm going to go Owen 16 or something disgusting. I've got mm. I, I've got uh, Justin Herbert as my quarterback. I've got uh, Mark Andrews at tight end. I've got uh, the Bills defense. I've got you know like uh, I, I've got a top tight end. I've got a top defense. I've got a top. I've got Justin Tucker, which mm-hmm. I know where you're going to win there. But I've got uh, my I've Derrick Henry. I've this is the best I've ever felt. Which Good means for you. I'm going to lose. Yeah, probably. That's the way this works. Yes. I mean, like, like every other time I've ever done a draft with this team, which again, I just want to point out how equitable my team, my, my fantasy football league is, which is, uh, I, I did the math. It's actually uh, 41% women. How awesome are we? Mm. Yeah. 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 See, women can't do this stuff. Yes, they can. My commissioner is also a female. Hey, Tracy, how you doing? Anyway. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, so there's that. But uh, part of the smorgasbord too is ta- I told you last week. I'm going to tell you about because when we talked about who the fa- the semis for the fictitious athlete hall of fame. Well, now we've got the fictitious rock and roll hall of fame, and this is a surprise to Evan. Evan has no clue who uh, who these are. I well, I didn't know we were talking about it, but I didn't. Oh I yeah, didn't but you don't know who they are, right? I do not know who they are. Yeah. Which I, I kind of yeah. like that. I kind of get a kick out of your reaction. Um, yeah. You and I missed the, and, and we've always talked about this now. We missed the biggest reaction, which will only mean something to nobody who's watching this. But when I when I had my random Boca, Ju- Boca Junior shirt, mm, oh god, yeah, I was so mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that, that wasn't on video, but we couldn't recreate yeah. it. No, no. Which uh, for those wondering, uh, Boca Juniors is the top uh, club team in Argentina, and Evan spent a lot of time uh, in uh, South America. One of the two top club teams in Argentina. Thank you very much. My bad. Mm. My bad. But either way, Evan was a fan of the other one. Yes. Also, Gaijina. Oh, before before we, we do that, speaking of jerseys, stand up. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah. we're getting stuff going on the computer. There we go. We got, uh, That's we the got one you talked some... about a couple weeks ago. See how yeah, we... we got the special Stay Puff jersey. Yeah. An actual baseball jersey. Actual baseball Stay Puft jersey. And mm-hmm. and my uh, Schaumburg Boomers made the playoffs. So we'll see how there that goes. Go. They're, awesome. the defending, they're the defending champions. Is so, that single A, right? Single A Frontier League Independent Ball. Okay. Cool. So, awesome. Yeah. Right. They play teams like the Florence Yalls. <laughs> that is... Uh, okay. This is... 
uh, sorry to anyone who's a fan of that, but that's like the worst fucking name. <laughs> it's a funny name. We, we drove by their stadium when we went down to uh, Tennessee in March. And I was like, oh, my God, that's where it is. Uh, Florence, Kentucky. So anyway, People are lucky. I'm sure you're awesome, but that is just awful. Yeah, it's a weird one. So anyway, do you want to you want to get to this? Should I start with my uh, naming everybody who's already in? Oh, yes, please. Yeah. And so right. uh, before you do that, though, the fictitious Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was just sort of like the brainchild of looking at the actual Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and saying, hey, here are some bands that technically don't exist, although some of them actually performed, which is mind blowing in its own weird way. I mean, you think it's weird that Rocky Balboa has a statue. Try explaining how the monkeys of four people with the real names technically didn't exist, but they kind of did, but they didn't. Mm. But their origin was not. But anyway, you get it. You get the idea, kids. But yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, all right. So our, our first class, 2015, was pretty much a perfect class. Yep. Uh, Spinal Tap, mm-hmm. the Blues Brothers, and the Monkeys. And, and again, like, if people are going to say, hey, all of those are actual real bands. Yes, but they all were real bands that were created for television programs. Right. And, and if you think that, that uh, Jolliet Jake really went, spent time in Jolliet prison. <laughs> <laughs> Although, to be fair, I agree with him. I do hate Illinois Nazis. Um, <laughs> uh, sadly, sadly, that's becoming more and more appropriate every year as we go. Yeah, on. well, uh, let's talk. We, we'll just stay out of politics. Uh, 2016. Well, we can't play with I know. are ugly, but. I know. Uh, 2016, The Gorillas mm-hmm. and Tenacious D. Another again, very strong class. And again, but they exist. Yes, but there really wasn't a pick of destiny. And the Gorillas are only ever seen on a screen. Mm-hmm. Never live. Yes. Uh, 2017 was probably half and half, even though I voted for both of these. Uh, Dr. Teeth, The Electric Mayhem, also known as a house band for The Muppet Show. And Wild Stallions, who never actually performed. <laughs> uh, yeah, but ba- yeah, ba- the good thing they got in then, because based on that third Bill and Ted movie. Mm. Uh, 2018, we had Alvin and the Chipmunks mm-hmm. and the Oneaters. I'm sorry, the Wonders uh, <laughs> from that, uh, that thing you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2019, we had one of the weirder classes, uh, again, Otis Day and the Knights got it from Animal House. Mm-hmm. Stillwater from Almost Famous got it. And popular tele- uh, Simpsons character who passed away, Bleeding Gums Murphy. Who was never popular. He was never popular. I was waiting for you to say it. <laughs> uh, I, I love those 40 MPHs softball, huh? Yep. Uh, 2020, Josie and the Pussycats, the television cartoon version. Mm-hmm. Uh Marvin Barry and the style uh the Starlighters from Back to the Future and the Ruddles. Oh, I'm so happy when they finally got in. Explain I think the Ruddles to those who are not necessarily familiar. The Ruddles? Yeah. Beatles pastiche. Uh, for, for pretty much to buy Eric Idle and the Monty Python. Well, not all the Monty Python group, but it was Eric Idle's brainchild. Just uh, all you need is cash. There you go. Yes, uh sense. And last, uh, last year, Eddie and the Cruisers, mm-hmm. a little bit of a surprise. Uh, Schroeder. What? That's a surprise to me. I never got that one. Schroeder from Peanuts? Never got it. Never yeah. got it. Worst Peanuts character ever, in my opinion. That's uh, possible. Uh, and the Archies. Yep. Who actually was number one. Yeah, Sugar, Sugar. Mm-hmm. So that's what we have. So now we have the... Uh, voting uh for this year so go ahead who we got well okay this one won't surprise you because he's he's been a finalist or they've been a finalist really it's he because it's it's really just cheech it's alice bowie okay yeah uh eric my eye uh basketball jones uh cheech is a hell of a lot more talented than people give him credit for man mm-hmm. agreed yeah uh bart simpson again do the bart man so okay Hold on one second. I have to sneeze. I apologize. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm good. Watch it. It's all good. Uh, this is the first one here uh, from crap. I'm blank. Uh, American Dad, Boys 12. Hmm. Interesting. So I'm looking at some of the ones that we've skipped here oh, as yeah. we're going through. Uh, there isn't anyone now. I'm like, yeah, that's a big deal. I, B- Barry Jive in the Uptown Five is a miss. 
uh, who were who were once almost Kathleen Turner Overdrive. <laughs> That's so true. You know, that that was a lot of people's first uh, taste of Jack Black. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Jack, I told- Black, Jack Black has inspired me because even though I've already turned 50 I'm going to sort of like borrow what he kind of did when he turned 50 he was like doing a bunch of fun shit at Disney, Disneyland so like uh, my 50th birthday celebration my official one will be 50 cool things in Las Vegas oh cool yeah all right so you had boys 12 yeah boys 12 uh okay no no shock here uh, although it didn't get become a landslide here because they didn't get in last time Bonsai and the Hong Kong Cavaliers yeah you knew it yeah uh so next is death clock hold on i'm working my way down death lock death clock death clock yep hold on there's so many nominees i have to work my way through no, no. um probably be better if i actually did have the list ahead of time so I'm like hey what happened to this person but no you're right <laughs> the the uh instructions oh the crazy frog didn't make it thank god <laughs> I, mean, I mean i mean we've proven that i i don't manipulate this otherwise bleeding gums would not be in this yes yeah uh, and no and no no uh dave veltry either huh no dave Vel- i don't even remember which one he is uh that's um i mean i write uh, all this stuff you think i remember it all but I don't. that's uh that's um steve Yusemi from uh oh uh i can't think of name right now well hold on to that thought Okay. All right. So who, who did you just say? I'm sorry. Last one was Death Lock. Okay. Uh, so then we've got Dewey Cox, uh, played oh. by uh, John C. Riley, which means he's a semifinalist in both. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, no Cal problem Lock there. Jr. Yeah. Uh, back from Star Wars, Figbrin Dan and the modal notes. Uh, no, no love for DJ Lance Rock, huh? No love for DJ Lance Rock. And none, no Dawn music this year. No, we did not. So really, he'll mm-hmm. never get it, never. <laughs> and no drive shaft. No drive shaft. Uh, mm. yeah, they, they deserve not to get in for the way that damn show ended. I wasted six years of my life for that. Fuck you, anyway. Uh, and, and, and no real Enrico Palazzo. <laughs> no, no, he, he did not. All right. Uh, okay, uh, Gene Frankel. Oh, man, hold on. We're really far. Ernesto de la Cruz. Tonight at the pit, everyone gets laid. Well, they never, they've never, they never played either. Well, they, 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 they never, they've never become a semi as I believe. I'm pretty sure they haven't. Mm. Foxy Love? No, no, no Foxy Love. But Gene Frankel, oh, one sketch, one sketch. More cowbell is yeah. in the lexicon of humanity, though, at this point. Oh, although, di- I, although I did see a clip where he's playing with Queens of the Stone Age. Oh, really? Yeah, with, you know, the song Little Sister, which does use a cowbell. Yeah. So they brought him up. <laughs> He's in full Gene Frankel card. That's that's well, pretty funny. Farrell is awesome. He's so awesome that he, he's the, he gets a pass even for participating in, in uh, Gal Gadot's bad idea of Imagine. Mm. So we made up for it with his uh, participation in the uh, the I can be black, brown, I can be blue, I can be violet sky thing that he did with. Uh, but yeah, but we'll always get a uh, we'll always get a pass. I mean, Gal get just like, I know you're all going through some hard times. Yeah, and even plus, I, lo- plus I loved him in the red. Plus I loved him in the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So, um, <laughs> uh, who's next? Uh, Hannah Montana. Who really should get in? Yeah, she's she's very high in this list. I so. I if man if Miley Cyrus just went all full grunge at all, she could do it. She's got the voice for it. She she's got the life do it do it miley just get get in the studio have avril Lavigne like write your songs and you sing them well no <laughs> avril all right uh, another surprisingly returned uh semi jet screamer from the jetsons okay no hedwig and the angry inch huh no no i gotta get to jet screamer we're a long way from there yeah um uh... Eep op orc ah ah. No Jackie Rogers Jr. <laughs> no. But Jackie Bradley Jr. is a blue jay. Yeah, it's true. Wait. Mm-hmm. No, did I miss you said Jet Screamer? Mm-hmm. Did I miss Gem and the Holograms? No, no. Yeah, they didn't. 
Genoa holograms didn't make it. And Jet Screamer did. Who in the what now? No Jesse and the Rippers? No Jessica Rabbit? I don't decide this. You all do. I, I'm not yelling at you. I'm yelling at the audience. Okay, well, here's one you'll... Okay, I, I'm going to bring you back. We've never talked about this movie, but I think this, is pro- this might be one of your favorites. I think this might redeem things a little bit. Lily von Stuck. Oh, I love that movie, but... Yeah, I 100% love that movie, uh, but... I'm sorry. Jimmy B. Rabbit Smith has to be one of the most important people here. What, what, what did win an Oscar? Yes. Wow. Well, there wasn't. Yeah. Well, okay. We better fast forward because you're not going to see. Hold on. Anything. Hold on. I got to catch up, man. I'm like, yeah, well, four things I was, there's nothing until an R. So no, no Johnny Squares, although he was just famous for dying. Johnny uh, Squares for those, like, that is. It's, it's, it's Jim Carrey before he was Jim Carrey in the Deadpool and he was mm-hmm. lip syncing Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah, the Deadpool is... Awesome. Wait, so no Leather Tuscadero this year either, huh? No Leather Tuscadero. I'm, I'm, I have no problem with that. Yeah, no, I just they made it that, this far before. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, Johnny Squares, that Deadpool movie is hilarious on like seven levels. Uh, yeah, well, God, the, the funny thing is too, when that came out, it would have been 1988, 89. Mm-hmm. Before 1990. And I remember the review. That's when I was like a big cinephile, right? And I thought, well, maybe that's what I'm going to get into. Obviously, that didn't happen. But, uh, and it's just like all the reviews, like, all right, he's just too old for this. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I got to hand it to Clint to, in, to me. It's like, after that, I think when, whenever he, that's sort of where maybe he took that to heart. It's Unforgiven. Mm-hmm. where he played the ancient cowboy getting revenge and shit. That was brilliant. Mm-hmm. And, he ne- he, and he never tried to play outside of his age again. Yeah, true. My favorite part of that movie is they gave him an Asian partner and he's like, they gave me an Asian partner. It's supposed to be good for the city. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And then of okay. course, Asian partner is really good at martial arts. So uh, I think, okay, this is not the quote, but I think diversity is good. <laughs> something like that something yeah. awful but, but there's yeah. something really bad and the other yeah, great scene the other great scene from that movie is when they're trying to kill the um the killer's trying to kill the news reporter with the motor the rc car loaded with explosives he's driving it down the street and trying to get it under the guy's car that scene is also one of the funniest chase scenes of all time anyway um the they ran out of ideas for so- dirty harry four yeah, but the amazing thing is for that, that's actually very progressive con- con- considered what he did in the other movies. That, that may be true. Uh, sorry, back. No MC Scat Cat either, huh? Another, thank God. <laughs> there was one other I, there were, that I missed. I can't remember who it was. Oh, no Nick Rivers. No. Uh, still one of the greatest lines of any movie. What's your name? Hillary. Hillary, that's an interesting name. It means she whose bos- bosoms defy gravity. What's your name? Nick. Nick, where did your parents come over that? Oh, my dad thought of it while I was shaving. Um, no, Not so good. So we're going to have to go all the way to R. So no Opera Man. No. No Otis Bad Blake. No. Man, I'm still going. No Phoebe Buffet. No. Actually, that might be a first. That's amazing. Uh, Pooty Tang. Well, Pooty Tang's never made it. I know. No, so so I, I, well, I'm an R now. Is it? Is it Mr. Randy Watson? No. Oh, he's not here either. Who is it? Robbie Hart. Okay. From a Wedding Singer. No, Rex Manning. He even has his own day, but he, he has his be. own day. But it, let's be blunt. We nobody's actually seen that movie. Nobody see that movie. Have we seen the movie? Okay, okay. I, I, I watched half of it and then I listened to the soundtrack a hundred times. I would say everybody I went to high school with has seen that movie. Really? Okay. I thought that movie blew. Uh, that's, those are two separate things. <laughs> Fair enough. The movie doesn't have to be good for everybody to have seen it. Yeah, that reminds me. I have to show uh, Pauline because uh, she just knows Renee Zellweger as, uh, as the, uh, the rom-com queen. Mm-hmm. I've got to show her that. All right, so, so we have Robbie Hart, but no Ricky Ricardo coming back. Yeah, I got no problem with that either. 
No, I was just saying. We're, but yeah, we're no, still- he's not back. I told you, it's all messed up. All right, uh, who we got next? From The Simpsons, this is a shock to me. Sadgasm. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, right, no Robin Sparkles, but no Ralph? Nope. My God. This is a weird list. Hannah Montana is going to skate in. <laughs> Never assume. The sex, no sex, but bomb. Yep. Yes. Okay. Did I miss one? No, no. Oh, sadgasm. Like, oh, sadgasm comes Saturday. before. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Sex, but bomb is there. Okay. And, and then the last four are all thes. They're all thes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So getting there. Uh, to see if there's anyone I need to be upset about. I'm not upset about anyone we've missed in the bottom half of the S's yet. Uh, Swan. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I, I love Swan. That is all my right. all-time favorite films ever. Okay, I'm, I'm in the thes here. So can I guess the thes? Guess four, yeah. The Banana Splits. No. Wow, that the uh, murder movie didn't help them. <laughs> um, the B Sharps? Yes. The Beats? No. The Beats didn't make it? No. Dear God. They need more allowance. You ought to lay he who? Uh, the Brady Bunch Kids? Nope. California Raisins? Nope. Oh, my gosh. Uh, go ahead, just keep going. I, I, I've lost. The School of Rock. All right, the, no commitments. No. The Folksman. Okay. Which is a fantastic film. That's Mighty Wind. It's yeah. It's Final Tap. And I, you- have, I, have, I have no trouble with The Folksman. And uh, The Soggy Bottom Boys. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, yeah, it's, it's really messed up. Well, now wait till you see the contributors. Hold on, let me, I'm still looking through here for anyone else who... Uh, uh, and while you're doing that, so it's not updated, but last year it was Dr. Johnny Fever who got in. Oh, okay. But, it, but it's not, it's, uh, yeah, it's not showing up there. But yeah, it's uh, Dr. Johnny Fever was a part of the inaugural class, as was Wayne and Garth. Okay, and no Kenosha kickers. No Kenosha kickers. No misfits, that makes sense. No Neptunes. The Neptunes solved crimes. They were the underwater Scooby-Doo gang. Mm-hmm. No Partridge Family. No, but I should talk about that on another show that I did. I'll get, mm. I'll get to that in the plugging section. I the Rudels are still section. here, by the way, on the list. Hmm? The Rudels and are still on the list. Yeah, it's gotta... okay. I, I had to eliminate some stuff there, but yes. Okay, cool. All yeah. right, so go ahead. Go to the next uh, thing. I'll, I'll keep looking in case there's anyone's because this is I know. My, my looking through stuff is just incredible to podcasting, so. <laughs> it's better than a lot. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here are the contributors. Tony Clifton. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Dickinson. Okay. Because if you need more cowbell. Yeah. Again, he, although he never reprised it, here's my prediction. He gets in. I'm going to predict it. Uh, I'm not voting for it. But again, that's not up to me. It's up to all of you. Uh, WKRP fans, Bucky Dornster. Okay. Who, who appeared in two episodes. Okay. <laughs> and was a typical union guy who decided in the first episode he wasn't doing shit. The second episode he was drunk playing softball. <laughs> and you tell I love WKRP. Yes. Yes. Uh, Colonel Homer Simpson, who signed the biggest country star and then sold her for nothing. Yeah. Okay. From the Blues Brothers. This is, I'm big on this. Curtis. Yeah. Curtis has been on this yeah. list before. Yep. Yeah. Uh, from Sex, uh, from, sorry, from Scott Pilgrim, Ramona Flowers. If you're going to have a muse, yep. you your muse. Understood. No mm-hmm. problem there. Yeah. Also, she was amazing in uh, Fargo same actress i yeah. didn't even know it was her yeah until i did like an imdb thing after that just incredible in that season uh someone i'm also big on venus flytrap sorry i'm, I'm all, this one i didn't have alphabetically so it's all over the place okay yeah uh venus flytrap 
uh, from Fifth Element, Ruby Road. Okay. Yeah. Also from Blues Brothers, we've got Ray. Ray Charles. That's Ray Charles. It, it, it kind of seems like that's kind of like Lee from the. Uh, it's just Bruce Lee. So Ray, Ray Charles. Ray at least owned. Oh, yeah. Okay. Lee, Ray owned the Music Exchange. It was named after Ray, and Ray did, gave us a number. Ray that did a lot more musical con contributions than Lee did in actual athletics <laughs> in competition. Enough. So I love and I love Bruce Lee. I love Bruce Lee. Some say we have a similar body. <laughs> oh, yes, very much so. <laughs> Marty DeBerge. And I'm a big fan of not necessarily Rob Reiner. He's a little weird these days, but or a little too focused, let's just say. But I love Rob Reiner mm -hmm. as Marty DeBerge. I okay. love that movie. Uh, he was just brilliant in that. Uh, and this was a nice surprise. Very nice surprise, I think, for some people. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this movie, but a lot of people are, including my partners in the uh, How the Hell Did This Go number one show. Wink Wilk Wilkerson. Do you know who that is? Uh, it's John Candy. Yes. Because I have it right in front of me right now. Okay. Uh, it's, not, it's not John Candy in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. So... Wait a minute, how did you know that? How did you have get that up the, that back black? Because right, I've been going through alphabetically to see what okay, we yeah. got here. Yeah, so it's Wink Winkleson, uh, John Candy, who played the DJ in that in that film. So John Candy who was he got in? He well, didn't get in. He was a finalist last year with just the cop who wanted to hear the Blues Brothers sing and, and as Bert and Mercer. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I, I, I know. I know. Yeah. That, this is also why we had a committee so set up the USA Hall of Fame because otherwise, Johnny Damon. I don't know, I'm just coming up with the most random athlete I could think of. I could probably come up with some. John Rocker? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Just. Oh, man. Marge Shot. I know she's an athlete. <laughs> We, we do have an owner contributor section, so yeah. Uh, no, Mar Marge Shaw, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Marge and Shaw. Her and her dog. Well, had some good ideas, but he went too far. <laughs> yeah. An actual quote. An actual quote. An actual quote from the for former owner of the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, you, you think Donald Sterling was bad? Nope. No, well, he was, but not com in comparison. Yeah, Donald Sterling is pretty bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so all right yeah so with that uh let's kick into uh those we lost i i, hope it's, I think it's gonna be a lot less uh than last yeah, week. yeah it's, it's a lot lighter list this week yeah. um so we did not the uh the beige mistress was quiet this week oh thank god although i will say that one of the greatest eastern european olympic athletes did pass away oh uh, george George Bersianu, uh, the wrestler, Greco-Roman wrestler from Romania, mm. who won the gold in Munich, the silver in Montreal, world champion in, in 69 and 70, silver medalist in 75, European champion in 70, 72, and 73. But other than that, he wasn't that good a wrestler. Yeah. What's crazy is he was the flyweight. He was 4'11 oh, and wow. was still that good. So, anyway, he passed away at the age of 72. Uh, from the world of music, uh, we'll start with Drummy Zeb. Drummy Zeb was the lead singer of what band? There's a trivia question for you. No, I couldn't, couldn't even... The uh, reggae band Aswad, uh, best known for their number one hit in the UK, which was covered by somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, Don't Turn Around. Don't turn around. Like Ace of Base? Ace of Base covered their number one 1988 hit in reggae. All right, I gotta, I gotta find that. I'm not familiar with Oswald. Well. Yeah, so... Um, they but British, he they're a British reggae band, I guess? Yeah, British, they're a British reggae band, correct. Okay. Uh, so, but Drummy Zeb, the lead singer, passed away at the age of... I'm doing the math here. Uh, 62. He would have been 63 this month. Um, <laughs> Also passing away, country singer Luke Bell. Yeah, um, I read about that. Yeah, was bipolar, 
recently changed medication and was out with some a friend to eat or his friend went out to eat they were together came back he was gone you saw nine days later uh in tucson just who knows uh but he was only he was only 32 was was he like I, i'm not a big on my contemporary country music uh but i know that name so he was pretty successful no yeah he had three albums um i i had seen his cover of jealous guy uh on uh, out there it's really good um okay i can't say i know him that well particularly but yeah he passed away at only 32. um passing away a little bit older uh was inez fox uh best part of the inez and charlie fox group who had a hit back in 1960 three with Mockingbird, which went oh. to number two on the US R&B charts, number seven overall on the pop charts. Sadly, I know that more for Dumb and Dumber. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, but she passed away at the age of 79. Mm. Uh, from the world of hockey, uh, we lost uh, Paul Knox right winger who played for uh the maple leafs but was also a member of the 1956 canadian national team that got the bronze medal in cortina uh there cannot be that many of those folks left no, yeah probably not passed away at the age of 88 and i'm including this person only because you're such a nordiques fan <laughs> uh joel by i can't even pronounce it I don't remember uh, him. What, what? Passed away at the age of 57, played for the Jets and Nordiques from 83 uh, through 89. I don't so, remember him. Anyway, yeah, he passed away. Uh, yeah, at only 57. Hmm. Uh, Hockey from, season coming up. Going to go to some Jets games. Yeah. There you go. He said, <laughs> Dude, don't, 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 don't worry about the commute. I think you'll make it. You'll be okay um hey, the inside joke is i live across the arena yes okay. that that's what's behind him uh in mount manitoba no, it's actually in front of me over there oh, it's in front of you over sorry. that way sorry i have my directions different here from you know the the way the lines get messed up across the border well our um, we do it, it metric that's why uh that's right there's a u in there so it's border with a u <laughs> um so uh from the olympics two times silver medalist in the shot put George Woods passed away at the age of 79, member of the USATF National Track and Field Hall of Fame. Um, his outdoor best still ranks him one of the top 40 shot putters of all time, oh, wow. 30 years after he retired, which is pretty that, amazing. That's very impressive considering how far athletics has come. Yeah. Through. So he, uh, he won the silver in Mexico City in 68 and Munich in 72. Um, from the uh, world of just the stuff we all care about, one of the leading animators and storyboard artists for Pixar, uh, Ralph Eggleston, passed away. Uh, he's only responsible for like organizing and working on Aladdin, Lion King, Pocahontas, Toy Story, Bugs Life, Toy Story 2, Fantasia 2000, Roll the Eldorado for the Birds, which he won a Oscar for for his short for uh, for the Birds. Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, Car, Ratatouille, Wally, Up, The Princess of Frog, Toy Story 3, Cars, Inside Out, Finding Dory, Incredibles 2, Soul, and Elemental, which is coming out here shortly. But other than that, he didn't do any movie that anybody cared about. Uh, but he passed away at, oh, from pancreatic cancer at the age of 56. It's like when you talk about uh, those side men. Yeah. Other than, other than legend, 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 they did nothing. Yeah, who, who did he work with? <laughs> Um, so I guess the three biggest names who passed away this week. Um, well, we have, we have one. I'll get to this one first. We did also have a member of the NFL, Steve White, played for the Buccaneers from 96 to 01 in the Jets in 02. Uh, passed away at the age of, I actually don't know, 48. Uh, he, bone marrow cancer. <sighs> yeah, not, not good. Yeah. Um, all right, so the three biggest names that passed away this week, Ernie Shavers, uh, the Black Destroyer, oh, passed I, I away. I missed that. I didn't know that he passed away. 78. Uh, yeah. Twice battled for the heavyweight championship of the world. Lost to some guy, guy named Larry Holmes in 1979. 
-hmm. after losing to some guy named Muhammad Ali in 1977. Yeah, if I remember right, I mean, like he did very well in those matches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, I, I miss. I did not know that he passed away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shavers was. Uh, I mean, a top ten guy for a long time back when the heavyweight division was so loaded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, like, like in a different era, he probably could have been champion. Yeah, well, it's kind of hard when I mean he beat, among others, he beat Ken Norton. Mm -hmm. uh, he beat beat Jimmy Ellis. Like he beat some really good boxers at the oh, time. Yeah. I mean, and Muhammad Ali and Larry Holmes were really, really good. <laughs> oh, especially when he fought Holmes. Yeah, Holmes. Holmes in seventy nine. I mean, I'm not a big boxing person, but mm -hmm. boxing in the seventies into the early eighties was just about as good as it got. And Holmes in that to be, yeah, especially in the heavyweight division. Seventy eight to eighty one was ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah, but he passed away at the age of. 78, uh, I'm trying to see from what. Um, I am not sure what he passed away of. So uh, from the world of baseball, uh, two-time all-star, but probably more known for his front office work, Lee Thomas passed away uh, at the age of 86. Played for the Yankees, Angels, Red Sox, Braves, Cubs, Astros, and the Nankai Hawks in Japan in 1969. Um, there's two-time All-Star, but that was when they had two All-Star games back in the early 60s. So he's All-Star in 62 and 62. Um, but he's probably better known for being the architect of that 1993 Phillies team that lost to the Blue Jays in the World Series. Mm -hmm. um, also, after he, uh, he was the Sporting News Executive of the Year that year, and after the, they lost, he ended up going to uh, – Boston to become a special assistant to Dan Duquette and was pretty much a guy who brought Manny Ramirez and Johnny Damon to the Red Sox, which was sort of important. Johnny Damon's been mentioned twice. I know. Yeah. Look at that. Unfrozen caveman outfielder. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we, we called him that when he was around. Um, <laughs> And finally, I think the biggest name who passed away this week, also at the age of 80, 86, also named Ernie, Ernie Zampezi, uh, passed away. The architect of the Cowboys offenses of the 90s. Uh, probably it's interesting with Coriel being nominated. Um, very much part of Coriel's staff in San Diego. He was in San Diego from 79 to 85. Uh, sorry, 79 to 86. Uh, there with Coriel um, as as the uh, defensive backfield coach, receivers coach, assistant head coach, and offensive coordinator. Um, there's a lot of very nice stuff that uh, Troy Aikman, I know your favorite uh, announcer, but had to say about him. Uh, but yeah, just be very. Uh, if we're going to get into, well, again, again, Dan Fouts exists, um, but. One of those people, if we ever, I don't think we'll ever really get a ton of assistant coaches in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's just we might get one or two, but he's probably on that list of uh, 25 or so that you'd consider for at least if they ever did that as part of it. So he was 86 years old. That's yeah. What I got. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we've only got two sections left on mine's where I do elevator up, elevator down. It's where I look at those who had a good week and those who had a bad week in terms of their Hall of Fame chances. And there, there's really nothing big that happened. And usually in the summer, that doesn't. Uh, I've got a couple weird elevator downs and this is just off the top of my head. Uh, I'm gonna say Donovan Mitchell. I don't like this trade for him going to Cleveland, mm. the Cavaliers. I like the uh, trade for the Cavaliers. He ain't the East is stacked. Okay, but if you're not going to win with Rudy Gobert, and I get the fact that they weren't getting along anyway, and they had to blow up the team no matter what, Cleveland's not going to go to that level. They're just not. Probably not, but... And if I'm they, Utah, I'm happy that they got Colin Sexton. I love that guy. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, Darius... But, the, I mean, the Darius Garland... Like, that team in Cleveland, they're a top six team in the East. Sure, but... Uh, I, I, again, I just don't see it. 
I'm uh, fine, I, but I mean, I like Donovan when, Mitchell. When, I know when but when you're Cleveland, you got to collect as much talent as possible, hopes that you can get somebody there and get lightning in a bottle. Like, they're not going anywhere with Sexton and Laurie Markin. They're a better team with Donovan Sexton's Mitchell. better than Laurie Markin. Oh, fine. Oh, yeah. I'm not arguing that. Yeah. <laughs> and Donovan yeah. Mitchell's better yeah, than so Sexton. This, this is just, just to come up with somebody. And my yeah. second person is for our Hall of Fame, the United States Athletic Hall of Fame. It's Aaron Rodgers. Because... I praised Aaron Rodgers a year ago, as you can, you can attest to. Mm-hmm. Uh, you and I are both pro-vax guys. Mm-hmm. I'm more of a pro- pro-choice guy on that. I, and my choice was to get vaxxed. Yeah, right. And I really didn't, and I'll be a blunt, and if I take some heat for it, so be it. I really didn't give a shit what anyone else did. I didn't. Uh, saying that, when Aaron Rodgers sort of like got sort of ripped apart for his immunization comment i'm immunized which all right and he doesn't owe anybody anything i'll mm-hmm. be calm with that he did come out and say i'm going to be apolitical going on joe rogan and i am a joe rogan fan but joe rogan has now been pulled to the right we can agree on that right mm-hmm. okay yeah don't argue me for me so okay because i'm more of a joe rogan guy than you are 100 percent. i am not a joe rogan guy on no, any, level of any part of his career so which is fair which is fair uh I'll put it this way, and I've said this to you, like, I didn't necessarily miss it when I couldn't get Spotify and Barbados. It wasn't that important to me. So I'm happy with a few clips here and there, which I'm entertained by. I do think that he gets, because the way the United States is, you get split so much that if you don't agree with one thing, you're automatically labeled another. I don't Mm -hmm. know that Joe Rogan three years ago and Aaron Rodgers three years ago necessarily thought they were right wingers. When everyone tells you you are, you get pulled that direction. And that can work okay. the other way, too. All right. So where are we going with Aaron Rodgers? Well, Aaron Rodgers got blasted or just even being on Joe Rogan. Yeah, but, and, but, he, but he also said that he intentionally misled everybody on Joe yeah. Rogan. So, well, But did he misled his teammates? No. Yeah, that's true. Which is all, personally, I would care about. Saying that, I'm thinking about our audience. We're going to be voting on that. Mm-hmm. And that's all I'm really going with that. I am not a fan of Aaron Rodgers the person. I think he, there's something really weird about this guy. I've often said that. I don't give a shit about his politics if he has any. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that he said, I'm not going to go on Fox. I'm not going to go on CNN. I'm not going to do any of that. Great. But if you go on Joe and you know where Joe's positioned, whether Joe thinks he's that way or not, that's where the populace thinks he is. Fair? Yeah, fair. Yeah. So you kind of know what you're doing when you do that. I would think that he knows that. I think that's going to alienate some people who will be voting for him on our stuff. Because Aaron Rodgers should be a candidate when he retires for our hall. No, he won't be a candidate. He, he's, I have no doubt he's going to be no worse than the second ballot. It depends on... I mean, yeah. how, how old is he? 38, 37, 38? Well, no, I'm just talking for our hall. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Football. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, and I think Aaron Rodgers... Uh, so, I mean, but I mean, 12 years from now, when we cleared out a lot of the biggest names, because there's some of you who are going to be coming next year who it's just not fair. Like, they would be first ballot Hall of Famers, except for the fact they're still going to be up against people like, uh, I don't know, Mark Spitz, who's still hanging out there somehow. Like, it's just, it's just going to be, be... Which could be. Yeah. Uh, but what 12 years from now, I don't think that's a good problem. Yeah. And, and I don't know. It's just one of those things, too, where I hate where your country is gone. And I say your country because for those unaware, I'm not American, even though that Evan and I co chair the United States Athletic Hall of Fame, which is something that we realized didn't exist. Mm-hmm. So we did that. But, uh, and as much as I'm, uh, I'm a center fence post turtle, whatever you want to call me. You know, that's me. Most people aren't. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, that could potentially hurt him. I think other stories are going to come out about just how this guy is a little bit off. Because I I do think he's a little bit off. He just has this incredible talent where he's going to get that. I do well, think that he's, well, he's, gonna- he's, he's been on ayahuasca for a lot. So <laughs> he's been what? He's been, uh, he's been on drugs during the off season. You didn't hear that oh. whole thing? No. 
Yeah, that he's been using uh, he's been using hallucinogens in the off season to help himself. I missed that completely. Okay. Yeah, that happened. I don't know a month ago. Okay. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it's Aaron's an interesting dude from everything you hear. Whether mm-hmm. you love him or not, even if you're a giant Aaron Rodgers fan, great if you are. But there's something off. Mm-hmm. And I think we've known this for a while in terms of who he is as a person. And again, I don't give a shit with a lot of this other stuff. I really don't, but once you're labeled, it's next to impossible to shake it. Mm -hmm. And he went by going on Rogan. And again, I don't give a shit. Go on Rogan. I love Rogan to a point, but that's his label now. Mm -hmm. And you have to know that. You know, and, that, and that's sort of where I'm going with that. Uh, the country, your country's culture war is scaring me. It's, yeah. Because, uh, like, I, I wish that people would just talk to each other. And, like, civil discourse is, I don't want to say dead, but it's dying. I mean, I, yeah. I, I'm still happy being in Canada where I can have people who love Trudeau and they're still my friends. I hate Trudeau. That's why I went there. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, those are my sort of elevator downs just because I don't know, man. But anyway, uh, you you always have the hammer because you should. You, <laughs> you're the hammer, man. And it's the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're having to tell us who has made who, over the last week in sports and pop culture who qualifies for this great Clint movie. Clint got mentioned twice. But before I there you go. That, Johnny Damon and Clint, who can we get in a second time? Just oh, no. so, just just yell Mark Spitz's name. Um, okay. We don't can, can, oh, can uh, do this one. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right, excellent. Um, so stop me if you've heard this one. Uh, Serena Serena Williams. Um, I don't want to. I'm breaking news here. She lost today in the U.S. Open in the third round. Uh, but I just want to talk and, and legend. this is going to what legend legend. I just want to talk about, do you know when Serena won her first major tournament la- match? Oh, geez. Okay. So she's 41. Mm, 1998. So her first tournament win was in 1997 in the Ameritech cup where she entered as a wild card coming in ranked number 304. Oh, close. Okay. Yeah. She beat number 27, Elena Liktosheva, in straight sets, then upset Mary Pierce, number seven in the world at that point. I remember her, yeah. And then upset Monica Seles, the four seed, becoming the youngest ever, uh, sorry, the lowest ever ranked player in the open era to be, beat two top opponents in one tournament. She ended up losing to Lindsay Davenport in that tournament in the semifinals. Putting in perspective as sort of like a, like a, a novice tennis fan back in the late nineties. And then Venus comes up because Venus is the older sister. Yeah. And there was a lot of people like, Holy shit. Look at her. Like what? There was a younger, more powerful sister. Yeah. Uh, Venus is um, Venus, uh, well, Serena. Because at a time, I mean, there was a debate whether who's going to be the better sister. Mm-hmm. There, there really was. Uh, I mean, now it, it's not even close, which is crazy to say because Venus had such a good career. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Serena Williams, all the attention she got. Oh, you're, do, do you know that uh, ESP, and again, ratings, I, say what you want about ratings now, but I think it's still impressive when you get traditional ratings. Her second round match, Got a 2.7 million people watching that. 2.7 on a second second round match. Second round match is amazing. Yeah. It is mind blowing to me. Yeah. So, but the reason I brought that up so that tournament, that first round match you won was November 1st, 1997. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll give you an idea how long ago November 1st, 1997 was. Tom Brady was not even, hadn't even thrown a college football pass. I love how you brought this to Brady and it's perfect. 
But just think Brady and yeah. Serena Williams and Tiger Woods, the three of them, have been in our lives for 25 years at this point. So they've been in our lives so long. Well, Leonardo, you and I are a are complete adult career. Adult yeah. Career Leonardo, now. they're so, they've been in our lives so long, Leonardo DiCaprio won't date them. Right. Like that, that's how, that's how long like, those. I'm not wearing a hat, but it's off now. <laughs> like that's how long they've been around. This woman has been great forever. Her first major finals championship knew she beat in the, in 1999. Uh, what country is she, is that person from? Germany. Yes. 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 I have, let, me, let me pull, sorry, let me pull this back up. I want to make sure I have it in front of me again. So her tournament, this was Germany. Oh, oh Steffi Groff? It was Steffi Groff. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm pulling, I'm pulling this up again. It, there, her Wikipedia page is so long, I have to go like all the way up to the top here. Uh, but, but 1998, here it is. Her first WTA final, I'm sorry, it's her second with Steffi Groff. Her first final was February 1999 on carpet at the Open GDF Suez in France, where she beat Amelie Moresmo in February of 99 and then won her? Indian Wells in March over Steffi Groff. I remember uh, Amelie, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like the list of people she played in the finals is a he, who's who of the history of yeah, tennis. Yeah. Martina Hingis, Lindsay Davenport, Kim Kleisters, Jennifer Capriotti, uh, Justine Anon, her si her sister, Anastasia Myskina. Sister, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, I mean, think about this. This this girl or this woman, she was a girl in Compton, who became not just one of the best tennis players in the world, but one of the most recognized athletes in the world, mm -hmm. one of the most recognized people in the world, one of the most to get socialites. Who was at the uh, the the wedding of uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle? George Clooney and Serena Williams. Mm -hmm. I'm sure others. I don't know. I mean, my wife made me. You know, she made me watch that fucking shit. But <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's just amazing. At just a moment of uh, of tipping tipping the hat to one of the greatest ever to do it in anything. Uh, yeah, uh, and I think I said this last week. Uh, my co-goat with Martina. Yeah, uh, and her sister. And her sister's probably a top five. Oh, yeah. It, it's crazy. Imagine being one of the five best tennis players in the world and her little sister is still better than you. Just absolutely insane. So. Yeah, well, maybe 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 Venus is top 10. I'm not sure because we got graphics. Yeah, we'd have to think, we'd have to think about but, it. And then you also have to factor in. It's always hard to do like, where do you put someone like Margaret Court who was playing? Chris, Chris Everett. Okay. All right, so Venus is probably more top 10 or close to it. And yeah. he's still not the best Williams. Yeah, true. Yeah. So, this anyway, was amazing. And yeah, and and I'll admit, uh, I was, I, I did sort of like DVR to try to watch their, well, no one try, I did watch their doubles match, and I was cheering for them because how can you not? Yeah. I mean, you know that's probably not going to happen, but it's watching history. The fact that again, two point seven million people watch that in the United States. That's if that doesn't tell you all you need to know about Serena Williams' popularity in tennis and in the U.S., I mean, she could have easily been my elevator up, but I didn't see the point for the mm -hmm. RBS. I thought it was oh. pretty obvious. Yeah. So, anyway, good for her. Let's move on so we can get people out of here to the because we talked about her forever to the bad. Yeah, isn't that nice though that we actually sort of like went long on the good? Yes, it's very <laughs> very nice. Uh, yeah, so the bad is going to tie in bad television with bad behavior. So there's a program on right now that my wife has found originally. She likes watching dumb TV uh, just to get her mind off of stuff. And every once in a while, she'll watch a show and like, this is just stupid enough for me to watch. Uh, this one is called Claim to Fame, which is hosted by uh, two of the Jonas Brothers who, the two who are not Nick or Joe. So Kevin and the, the littlest one, Frankie Jonas. There's another one? There's a, there's a bonus Jonas, as they call him. A bonus Jonas. What bonus is it, Jonas. Zeppo of this world? Yes. 
That was so anyway. So anyway, they have 12 people who are related to major celebrities living in a house. Oh, together. okay. Okay. I know what the show is. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so we've lost a few, we've lost, there've been people related to all sorts of different folks, but three of the people who are on that show, their family member that they're related to had a very bad week. <laughs> so first, uh, Jasmine, who is the sister of Tiffany Haddish. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, that, oh, but yeah, don't tell people who don't know what happened. Um, someone, okay. so, I'll, I'll put it this yeah, way. I can do it. Okay. She, 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 she hired, she doing. hired Prince Andrew's lawyer. <laughs> yeah, that actually su sums it up better. Sums it up better. Yeah. She's been accused of, uh, along with Aries Spears of inappropriate behavior with underage people. Okay. Aries. Uh, but I'm just saying the two of them were tre trending together today. So yeah, yesterday too. Uh, I love Tiffany Haddish. Oh God, I, I think she's hysterical. That one is. God, I hope that I, I I hope her. There's not a lot of those things where this shit happens. Where my first instinct is, I hope that's not true. Usually, I believe all the victims. This one, I'll admit, God, I hope that's not true. Yeah. All right. So that's that's the first one. Second one, we oh, have, no. yeah, second one, we have the, uh, I believe he is the nephew of country singer Jason Aldean, <laughs> whose wife had a little bit of a meltdown this week. Jason, did nothing really happen to Jason, but his wife, his wife happened to Jason. And lastly, we also had Tiffany Favre, Brett Favre's daughter on there which is how this ties in, who has been, is currently under investigation for taking $70 million for children's charities in Mississippi or for the uh, federal welfare funds that are supposed to go for him to make speeches that he never made. Yeah. This how bad you have to be coming. stealing child welfare funds from Mississippi? Uh, he could have easily been my, uh, I, I looked at him as also an elevator down, you know, for the same thing for our US Hall. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, my favorite thing about, well, not favorite, uh, well, my two favorite things about Brett Favre, one is the Saints fan, the fact that he got the shit beat out of him, which is why the Saints went to the Super Bowl. Okay, um, yeah. fair enough. I'm a little bit selfish on that, I'll admit. Uh, the second thing is, I think he's the unofficial answer to a trivia question. Who is the first celebrity to get caught with a dick pic? Hmm. Probably true. Because I think he was sort of like doing that in the old greeny Motorola days. <laughs> he had to take out his flip phone razor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, th I think it might have been. It's like a, well, you know, the pixels make it look, make it look a little smaller, <laughs> but it's, it's really pretty. The girl, the girl had to answer with her pager when she answered the pager, downloaded at 256 bit. <laughs> massage masseuse too. I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Yeah, uh, which is just showing how different we are in, in modern media. Uh, and the funny thing is, like, in, in terms of, we talked about like Aaron Rodgers a lot, right? Aaron Rodgers has got that whole weird sort of thing going with his teammates, but all his teammates love Brett Favre. They do. The, like, I, I have never seen one former football player, even people who went against him, who didn't say, didn't just love Favre. Yeah. Is Favre a country boy? Does he look like he would have, like, drove the General Lee? Yeah. Yeah. But it, we're also part of that weird era now that people want to hate on him for the wrong reason. Hate on him for this. Yeah, 100% hate him on him for this. So yeah, it was just it was just funny because we watched that show and I was like, oh, Brett Favre, oh, Tiffany Haddish, oh, Jason Aldean's wife. What the hell is going on with the show? So Simone Biles, whose sister's on there, I hope I hope everything's fine. <laughs> well, yeah, but everything happens in three, so it'll be okay. Yeah, true. Yeah. By the, way, the, the funny the funniest thing about that show is Simone Biles' sister looks exactly like her, mm -hmm. like exactly. 
like her. Oh. And so the whole time they're all like, oh, well, like, I don't know who anyone is, but that's Simone Biles' sister. <laughs> all right, I gotta watch that. But, you know, it's sort of funny. I think out of those three, the one who's going to hurt the most, it's going to be Tiffany Haddish. 100% Tiffany Haddish. I mean, like, okay, you want to screw a bunch of hillbillies or whatever, like, fine. You want to screw that, well, fine. That's one thing. You did a one person or, like, allow any kind of grooming, and I don't know what's true or not. We're not saying, because we have no flipping clue. Yeah. Uh, she's yeah. in big trouble because you can't, you can't escape that stink she is so anyway let's move off of that stink into, let's go from to a bigger stink yeah this one is confusing more than anything the ugly is the duke, that right the duke byu uh inappropriate language racially charged language thing with the volleyball player though so the original story is that Duke played BYU in volleyball, women's volleyball. No. Duke has one uh, African American player on their just team. Just one or just one starter? Uh, that I can't tell you. Okay. Uh, but she was, when she was on the Who's court, there was a lot of regardless. No. Regardless. When she was on the court, particularly when she was serving, there's a lot of heckling coming from the BYU student section, which apparently included several uses of the N-bomb, among other things. So you could see, like, the, you can hear it, and you could see, like, the teammates looking in the crowd and everything, and Duke complained, and eventually BYU did something, and they banned the person for life from mm -hmm. the arena. But now it turns out it doesn't seem like they have the right person. Or they can't figure out if it happened at all. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. <sighs> It, and, and that's sort of, yeah, this is like colossally ugly too. And I'm kind of sort of glad you brought that up because that would have been part of my smorgasbord. Uh, obviously, if there was one person who said anything like that, they should be banned for life. And mm -hmm. ostracized, ostracized and I, and I've said before, I hate cancel culture, except for this. Cancel this motherfucker if that's what he did. Yeah. And, and just by the way, Don Staley has canceled the uh, South Carolina. That's BYU. what I want to talk about. Yeah, she too. canceled it over this as well. So, Which, to me, that kind of bothers me a little bit. Because, A, did it happen? Because, and, let, and I've always said, I'm, a, I'm an agent of logic. So we live in an era where, if you look at that game, that wasn't, that was a full crowd. So there would have been probably at least four digits of people there, from what I could tell. Now, the police, and again, not that I'm pro-police or anti-police or whatever the hell you want to say, but they, they couldn't find anything. Okay. But there is no video evidence of anything? Nothing? Yeah, I there don't is, know. There's not even video of the person being ejected. So yeah. one, of, one of three things has happened. A, uh, I believe her name is Rachel Richardson. A, she's full of shit. B, she heard something that didn't exist. Which, with the, in that in that thing in that arena in that thing, it's possible. Actually, it's A or B, really. It's, it's A or B, so either... Or, 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 or C, someone did hear it and they just don't, didn't get caught for whatever reason. Someone did say it. Okay, or it's C, yeah. So it's A, B, or C. So what's most likely? We've got no video of this? We've got no audio of this? Nothing? Who knows? I mean... I'm not saying, I'm not saying that it's completely impossible. I'm, I'm, and I'm not going to say that. I do think it is somewhat relevant that her godmother is a bit of a race baiter mm. from what we've learned. And I think what's also disgusting about how the U.S. has become so polarized that when this first came out, CNN was all over it. Or that left-wing media is. Fox hey, just by the way, calling CNN left-wing media is getting very, very hard at this point. I agree. I Which is why I try to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you're right. I agree. Uh, either way, left-wing media has said was all over this with the front page. Fox didn't. And then when there was no evidence of that, then it, we, we know what happened. Right. Of course. Right. Which is 
more of a condemnation of all media. Frankly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I, I you people, know, like people I, only report what fits their narrative. Right. I mean, I crave. But them. It's amazing. Here, here, here's the thing. I don't think this girl made it up. In my opinion. I hope not. I don't I think, think it, it, it appears as if she reacted to stuff when she was back there and she may have heard something. It may not have been the same thing. Who knows? The fan who was ejected uh, apparently got in the face of another player after the game on Duke's, on Duke's team. That, yeah. but, so, but, but here's what bothers me more a little bit. This guy wasn't a student. No, well, he was a student at a different college, but yeah, he wasn't. He was in the student so he section. Was, he was, he was, he he, he was uh, a Utah Valley, a Utah Valley student. What was it? Okay, I didn't. I didn't read that, but I, I just read that he wasn't BYU. So the BYU reaction was, okay, we're going to ban the student section. Okay, why? Nobody from your school embarrass anybody. Right. Um, I would say as someone who's come from Boston, a city which has a history of people yeah. just assuming the worst about it, the only city in the country that's probably viewed worse than Boston by most people is Salt Lake, okay. um, just in general, um, particularly with the history of the Mormon church and non-white people. Um, so BYU was trying to err on the side of let's not do anything, but that is, that is super ex upset, ex obsessive. That's a hundred percent. It's also where I feel that that with Don Staley too. I mean, now if you've got a, in, in the South Carolina, Don Staley, for those unaware, she's the head and an incredible head coach, by the way. Uh, someone she's who Hall of Fame, I've forgotten. I believe so. And she could make a Yeah. Uh, Don, yeah. I mean, the South Carolina women's basketball program is very, very potent, very, very good. And she could very well have had a group of people. And go, this is where I go back to the polarization, right? So it wouldn't surprise me if Dawn and her teammates, or teammates, her, her players, have never even heard the other side that, no, maybe this didn't actually happen. Now, I I, now I'll admit, if I'm a black woman, again, I, I can't put myself in that. It's impossible. But I was wondering where that sentence was going to end, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> but if, no, but if I'm a black woman and I only hear, well, somebody said that about a black woman in this place, I'm not going there. Yeah, 100%. And you don't want, you don't want to put your team there either. No. In this sort of situation. But what so. if it didn't happen? Which is, I think, a very relevant question to ask. Right, but she, can she canceled that game going out there yeah. before it was announced. That this so she canceled three days ago. The information came out two days ago. Oh, I so the information the, came out today that she canceled it. No, he was I canceled about that today. It was canceled okay. three days ago. Okay, fair. So right. she, uh, well, the facts were when she canceled it, this happened, and that there's nothing else. The, yeah, I didn't know that. The, the other announcement came out two days ago. Yeah, I mean, and at that point, once you've made the decision and you moved on, you can't just like flip okay. back and forth. All right, I didn't know that. I mean, but either way, I mean, like it's like, the whole thing is just so. It's weird. It, it is because like, I can't, and I'm just going again for my thing of logic when, where I'm thinking about this. I can't imagine that in, and I, I try to watch a bit of that. Like I, I just wanted to get a gauge of like what, what the attendance was. So there hadn't been at least a thousand. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's on YouTube. You can see that. There, there are a lot of people at that game. A yeah. significant number of people for a women's volleyball game. I was yeah. surprised. That people sure. Yeah, no, I was too. But so I mean, at least a thousand or close to so lots and lots of people. If there was somebody doing that, wouldn't have somebody have filmed that? Well, they're all white. Who is the most likely to sort of do that? A white chick. Sorry, but they are. To film, you mean? Oh, yeah. yeah if probably. somebody's doing that. I mean, like, that's the thing. I mean, I'm not exactly a BYU stand. Why would I be? I'm not Mormon. I'm not from Utah. I don't get that culture. I don't have to. I don't have to understand it. I just have to accept it. But I'm not. Well, no, but it's true. I, I don't I know. Just continue, continue, continue. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not going to necessarily say just because somebody's Mormon that I'm going to say like, oh, well, you must have this view. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Well, I mean, the reason the reason it's in the ugly section is because of you already talked about the polarization going on in this country, and the he said, she said, and we'll probably never know the truth about this situation. And both sides are now pulling at this, 
pulling the, the strings on each side of the tear in their direction to prove they're right. I don't know if we'll ever find out the answer on this. It's just gotten weird. And I don't know. And that's, I mean, it's gotten weird. And when things get weird, they get ugly. It's a microcosm as to what's going on right now. hundred percent. So the point where, I mean, like you and I, we've had a lot of discussions. We're so passionate about American sports. And again, I know it's weird that I'm a Canadian, but I'm very passionate about this. This is the most passionate project I've ever had out of all the ones I have, which is a hell of a lot. Mm -hmm. And there have been times I wonder, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've, you felt the same way. Yeah. Maybe not as much as me. I mean, maybe more in some ways. Again, uh, you've got a completely different perspective than I do. But yeah. Like the whole and thing. I mean, and, too. and you could tell on this show, there's a lot of things I really want to say. Like some, I always tell my kids, it's very, very easy to become famous, right? Mm -hmm. Get yourself in front of a microphone and say something incredibly inflammatory and you become famous overnight in this country probably get yourself elected to Congress in a lot of places, right? Uh, but there's that, a lot that, of things that I want. on both sides, by the way. No, I, I didn't say, yeah. I, that was not a partisan statement. No, I know, I know, I know, yeah. Uh, but there's, yeah, there's a lot of things that are going on that I want to say, and there's just. Yeah, well, yeah. well when you're passionate enough, you do. Like when we, we talked about the gun control stuff. Yeah. And, and so, you know, like, I, I'd like to think that as much as I have a, a, lo a lovely, healthy hatred for my current prime minister, when he says something I like, I you say. Do, you, do, you do give him credit. So. Abs and I still will. I understand. As much as I think he's a colossal douchebag, racist, sexist, who's, anyway. But anyway, moving on. Other than that. Other than uh, that. So on that, what's close to show? <laughs> Let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that. Uh, hey, I wrote a book. Did you know that? You've said so before, I believe. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, make, it makes a fa fabulous Halloween gift. Why not? Uh, Chavo Guerrero Instant Classic. I had the pleasure of helping Chavo Guerrero, the late Chavo Guerrero Sr., by the way, not Junior, uh, mm -hmm. with his autobiography. You can get that Chavo Guerrero Instant Classic. Uh, hey, maybe you might want to be a guest on this one. Uh, Chris Bernay and I, uh, we do a show called, uh, oh, the, uh, this crap was on national television. Did I tell you what we picked next? Uh, no. Manimal. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Want to jump in on that one? Uh, I don't, don't, wait, I don't do remember Manimal well enough. I know it happened, but I don't remember it well enough. Or do you want to wait to the one that you really want to do? Yeah, I want to wait to the one I really know. Well, Chris Bernay and I do that. Also, too, thank you for all the people on YouTube. You really loved our Harlem, Harlem Globetrotters uh, Visit Gill Gilligan's Island episode. <laughs> That's doing actually really well on that. I've, Damn if I could figure that one out, but you are, so thank you. Uh, Rad Nelson, Andrew Tessman, and I, we have, uh, how the hell did this go to number one? So we just did Steams, na 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 hey, 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 goodbye, which Evan also passes uh, passed that last week when I said, hey, when I gave you a trivia question, you figured that one out. Uh, we're doing Mambo number five, which never uh, happened yes. on Mambo, yes, next week, so we're going to so, be doing that. Take, taking a list of X's and making millions of dollars off. Yeah, from, from, from a guy you'd think was a Cajun or Creole guy, but he's actually a German Ethiopian. Okay. Or something like that. Didn't I don't know. That. Neither did I. I'm in the preliminary research stage. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, and uh, Glenn Pulowski, you know, he's the greatest triathlete ever to come out of Buffalo. I'm well, right now me. he's yeah. Well, right now he's stuck in New Zealand, so I might be able to squeeze out another uh, classic sports review out of him. I'm trying, but if you haven't seen our last one, we looked at the big brawl game between Colorado and and uh, Detroit, and we had a special guest for that. Two special guests. Super fan of the of uh, all Colorado sports, Ron Katz. He's also like the fan of the year for the Broncos. Pretty big thing, right? And Adrian Dater, who was uh, part of uh, the Colorado Avalanche beat, uh, beat reporting at that time. So we're really excited about that. That's up. Uh, we're looking at a boxing match. Right? I think we're going to do a Klitschko Lewis. Okay. Because, you know, I don't know if you know, there's some things going on in Ukraine. And maybe you've heard of it. Uh, the Ukraine, yes. Yeah, yeah. So we, we thought we'd sort of look at a bit of that before that. I might have a special guest lined up. Not sure yet, but I'm working on that. With that said, wherever you are, wherever you may be, Thank you for being part of the Bucknerverse. Ah, see what I did there? Yeah. There <laughs> All right, take care, everyone. Bye.